Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation. That the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. And may the Lord be lifted up. Joy us, light of glory.
Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend upon us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord God, our light and our salvation, grant that your servants who seek your face in times of trouble may see your goodness in the land of the living, and that we may be set safely on the rock of our faith, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
from Isaiah. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised and we held him of no account. Station 12, a reading from Matthew. Jesus cried with a loud voice, Ele, Ele, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And a while later, Jesus cried with a loud voice and breathed his last. Station 13, Jesus is taken down from the cross. A reading from Luke. Then Joseph of Arimathea took down the body of Jesus, wrapped it in a linen cloth. In station 14, Jesus is laid in the tomb. When Joseph had wrapped the body in a clean linen cloth, he laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in the last days, he has spoken to us by his son. <laughs> Of the whole world for the well 
well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For our bishops Elizabeth and James, <clears throat> for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our public servants, for the government and those who protect us, <clears throat> that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, <clears throat> those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. gone before us and are at rest, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, in thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, 
O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, here we are at the end of the way of sorrow. Jesus dies on ostensibly alone. One of his disciples betrayed him, another denied him, and the rest deserted him. Only the women who came with him from Galilee with his mother were looking on, but at a distance. He had experienced intense suffering and before he died, he cried out to God with words from Psalm 22. Every devout Jew knew this psalm by heart. Jesus was seeking comfort and support from God, his Father. Just the night before, he had prayed to God asking if this cup, his suffering and death, might pass from him. But what he said afterward was probably more important. He prayed also not for his own will to be done, but for his father's. And so there he is doing his father's will, but also his own. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, I've always thought, reveals his human nature quite deeply and very profoundly. He didn't really want to die. But what human being among us is eager for death? And Jesus really should not have died. He was innocent of any wrongdoing. But thanks be to God, he was in relationship with God from the very beginning, before time. A relationship so close that Jesus would do only what the Father wanted him to do. And that means Jesus, in his prayer, doesn't attempt to persuade God to do what he wants. And nor does he try to strike a bargain with God like we sometimes do to try to get things done our way. For Jesus, there was only one way and one will, and that was and is God's. Just before Jesus breathed his last on the cross, the devil returned to test him one last time. This was that opportune moment we heard about on the first Sunday of Lent. The devil was looking for another opportune moment because his first testing of Jesus in the wilderness he failed miserably at. But now his testing comes from the mouth of some of the bystanders who mock him using, interestingly enough, some of the same words that the devil used. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. The religious leaders also mocked him and said, He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. Isn't that just the way it is with us human creatures? We want faith, our relationship with God, on our terms. It's the epitome of human sin and arrogance. Thanks be to God for his love and mercy on us. And that evidence is Jesus among us. Thanks be to Jesus for his love and faithfulness and his unbroken relationship with God. Jesus thwarted the devil again and stays on the cross and saves us 
and all human beings from sin and eternal death. So great is Jesus' love for the Father, the Holy Spirit, and for us. And it is Jesus' love for him that moved Joseph of Arimathea. He was one looking for the kingdom of God, and he was moved to act boldly because of Jesus' love for him. And he secured the body of of Jesus from Pilate. He took him down, wrapped him in a linen cloth, and then Joseph placed him in his own tomb. This way, he made sure Jesus received a proper burial. For Joseph, Jesus was Savior and Lord, as he is for us. And so I wonder, in these last days of Lent, may each of us give ourselves over to Jesus' sacrificial love and act like Joseph. Because when we do, we may be quite surprised by all that becomes possible. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you please rise for prayer? Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures <clears throat> of which we cannot see the ending, by paths yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preside.